So yes, I am wearing my kimono again. We are not in our jammies and we are gonna talk about exam day tips. If you guys don't know yet, the board exam is divided into two days. So on day one, the three subjects would be clinical chemistry, microbiology, and parasitology, and then urinalysis and other body fluids. And then on day two, first subject would be hematology, and then immunology and serology, and blood banking. And then for the third subject would be histopathology, and metaclos and bioethics, and laboratory management. A total of six exams. So tip number one wake up early and to eat your breakfast I know it's a no-brainer everyone should do this but me personally I am not a breakfast person I mean I don't get me wrong I love breakfast food but I guess I rarely eat breakfast food during breakfast time <laughs> but try to at least have something in your stomach because you'll need your brain food don't forget to wake up early as well because you should also arrive before the whole time of your exam. If I remember correctly, I think our call time was 6.30 in the morning, so I have to wake up earlier than that because I had to commute from my condo to St. Jude College. I think it was like 10 to 15 minutes. You still have to account for that time, like the 15 minute commute time, and then the time you'll have to take to eat your breakfast, and then the time you'll need to shower. You'll need the time to prepare before coming into the test site. For step two, it's to double check if you have everything already in your backpack. Check if your uniform still fits you. Yes, for the board exam, you'll have to wear your uniform, your school uniform. Make sure it still fits. Do you have your shoes ready? Remember to sharpen your pencils. Don't forget your permit. If you want a haul on the things I brought for the board exam, I will make a separate video about it because I'm sorry. I don't want to make this video too long. Tip number three, do not forget to eat your lunch. As I told you earlier, you'll have three exams in one day. Let's say this is day one. So this would be chemistry, microbiology, and then this would be urinalysis and other body fluids. So you'll have breaks in between exams. So you'll have two options. So you can eat in between chemistry and micro so that when you're taking the exam for micro, you have already taken your lunch. Or if you're that person who eats their lunch really late, then you can eat your lunch between micro and histopath. What I did was in between chemistry and micro, I just had a snack. And then on micro to urinalysis in between that, that's when I had my lunch so it's up to you how you will schedule it if you want to have your early lunch or your late lunch while reviewing for the board exam I applied on those calorie meal planning type of site their food comes in a brown paper bag and they're stacked into like meal containers it's labeled as breakfast lunch dinner snacks so I told them if they could just bring it earlier than usual because I will be taking the board exam at 6 30 and they told me sure we can do that the naive me <laughs> At the time was like okay wow that's perfect like they agreed to cater the food earlier because I told them if they cannot then I would just not have the food delivered for some reason I cannot change the delivery site to a school because it's hard for me to go to the test taking site go back to the condo to just pick up the food me believing their words that they can deliver the food on time was a big mistake so my food arrived in my condo at 9 in the morning I didn't have the time to wait for the food so what I did was I bought some breakfast already the night prior. I ate my breakfast just heated up on the microwave and then for lunch what I did was I phoned my friend and then I told him if he could deliver the food from the condo to St. Jude College. It's a good thing he agreed. Now that I know that they cannot deliver on day two I just bought food that's near my condo so that I will have food prepared for the board exam. So just learn from my experience. It wasn't a bad experience but on the day I counted on them the most that's when they let me down just prepare your food and learn from my mistake board exam tip number four is that once you're in your room assignment avoid any distractions and listen to the instructions this is important because there would be some instructions that your proctor will tell you sometimes they modify the instructions so that it will best fit the test takers at the time during the review they told us that on the last exam of day two for the subjects field, you have to write histopathologic techniques and medtech laws and bioethics 
and laboratory management, all of that. And I think during my board exam, like the proctor told us to just write histopathologic techniques and med tech laws and lab management. So if I did not hear that, then I would have had a ding on that and maybe I would have not passed the board exam. And if you're in doubt, just don't be shy and raise your hand and ask your proctor about it because it's really hard to have a mistake on writing it and then knowing that you could have done something about it if you were vocal enough to express your concern. Tip number five is to keep your answer sheet clean and try to avoid erasures as much as possible because the review center instructors told us that the machine checking the test papers is very sensitive and it doesn't take erasures really well. If you cannot avoid erasing, try to erase everything as much as possible. Tip number six is to apply the test taking tips that is taught on your review center. They gave us a handful of tips so that we can be educated guessers. If you're absolutely guessing already and you don't know the answer at all, if you have a gut feeling about a certain answer, it's most probably right. And then another tip that they gave us on the review center is to do the elimination method and try to deduce your way into the right answer. So let's say this is the question. So if you feel like A and B are the same thing or they give out the same thought, then you can eliminate A and eliminate B and now you have a 50-50 chance of getting the right answer compared to having a 25% chance of getting the right answer. Oh, and then another test taking tip is to encircle the words should not or encircle the words except. If all else fails, just answer letter C because C is for Christ. And you know, the only person you want looking over into your test paper is Christ so that he can bless you with the right answer. Just answer C. So tip number seven is to answer on your test paper because on the day of the board exam, they will give you a questionnaire and then they will also give you an answer sheet. So let's say this is the question and I want to answer letter, let's say A because I am a question. Yes, you are. So <laughs> I will encircle A and then when I'm reviewing the answer, if I still think that on question number one, the answer is letter A and I'm sure, for sure, for sure, question number one is letter A, then I would safely shade number one as letter A for my answer. Do not follow how I shaded the answer here. First of all, you're not allowed to use a yellow highlighter. I just use a highlighter so that there would be a contrast so that you can see that I am shading it and you should fill in the gap. And it's really hard to do this right now because I am doing this while looking at the viewfinder right there. <laughs> Try to not go outside the lines as much as possible. For my last tip for the board exam is to review your answers. It is important to review your answers because let's say you answered letter A and then you change your mind about question number one. You want to answer letter B now because you are for sure that after reading the question again, you notice that it is not ending with a question mark. Then I am a question is not a question. So now you are now decided to answer letter B. And if you have not shaded your answer key yet, then you can change your answer right here and then now you're for sure that you want to answer letter B. And now you don't have to erase anything on your answer sheet because all the answering you did was just on the test paper. Whew. We are now nearing the end of this video. So the board exam has ended. What are my tips after the board exam? Tip number one is to distract yourself while waiting. After the board exam, I went back to my province and because it was just me and my parents, we all went to church together, we went to the mall, we ate out, anything to distract yourself while waiting because I remember it took like five days before the results came in. That's a rough estimate before they release the results. Tip number two is to stay positive. Sometimes we forget to stay positive while waiting for the results of the board exam because you know how bad it went. That's how I felt after I took the board exam. I second guessed all my answers and then I'm thinking that I did not shade the right answers because I also did some erasures 
years and then I'm also thinking about that. I was super anxious before the board exam results came out because I was thinking about all the slight mistakes that I did. Like I always say, it's not over till it's over. Some people would want other people to know first before they know themselves if they did pass or didn't. But I'm the type of person who wants to rip the band-aid off and know if I did pass or didn't. Lastly, don't forget to utter a prayer of thanks. This is the most important part. To utter a prayer of thanks to the Lord or say thank you to the people who supported you along the way. I, I, I thank my parents. I thank my professors. I thank the review centers who taught me. People who helped me stay positive even though I was breaking down and I'm just super thankful that there were people who stood by me during those times. This ends our video. If you would like to see more of this type of content, clinical laboratory science content, then consider subscribing to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up because it would really help my channel grow and comment down below if you have some more video content ideas and don't forget to wash your hands everybody and I will see you on the next one. Bye!